I'm Lisa Steele. I'm a fifth generation chicken keeper, author, and master gardener. When I first started raising chickens, I knew I wanted to do it naturally. I started sharing my advice and tips online and found that there are lots of other people just as interested in raising their chickens naturally as I was. So now I'm bringing my Facebook page, Fresh Eggs Daily, to life. The role of the backyard chicken has changed greatly over the last century. We thought it would be fun to do a show chronicling the rise and fall of family farms and also weaving in my own family's history keeping chickens over the decades. most Americans lived and worked on family farms. My great-grandparents lived in Finland and raised chickens and ducks on their farm. About that time, things were getting kind of heated with Russia, so they left Finland and headed to America for a better life for their family. My grandmother was just a little girl at the time. They moved to Duluth, Minnesota, and then eventually moved to Cape Cod, where the whole family worked on a cranberry bog. A typical flock in a family farm or homestead would consist of a rooster and several laying hens. Each spring, some of the fertile eggs would be hatched under a hen, and those young chicks would become the layers for the next fall and through the winter. New layers generally lay through the first winter without any light. Before electricity, there was no light in barns or chicken coops, so that would keep the family in eggs through the year. Any young roosters that hatched would be used as meat through the fall and winter. And every couple of years, the older rooster would be switched out for a young rooster. So this kept the flock self-sufficient and replenishing itself. Everything changed on March 13, 1918. The Postmaster General deemed it legal to ship baby chicks through the mail. They were put in a box, put on a train, and arrived at their destination in 72 hours. This meant that farms no longer needed to have their own fertile hatching eggs or keep roosters. They could just order chicks from hatcheries to replenish their stock when they needed new laying hens. The Irish family farm or homestead didn't keep very many chickens. They just kept enough to provide their family with eggs. They generally didn't eat the chickens. Chicken was considered a special occasion dinner on a Sunday or a holiday. The chickens were kept for egg laying purposes. The chickens weren't generally fed a commercial feed. Generally the chickens would be fed three times a day, although it was pretty informal in the morning. The farm wife would generally throw out some grains to the chickens to keep them busy and scratching. If she wanted them to maybe work in the, her garden, she would throw some cracked corn or millet or something over the soil and they would scratch it up looking for the grains. In around midday or so, they would get some leftovers from the kitchen, whatever scraps or ends or trimmings there were from the, the midday meal. And then before the chickens went to bed, they would get more grains, which would help them stay warm in the winter, digesting that food that they were eating. Around the turn of the century, there weren't a lot of chicken keeping products. There obviously weren't incubators or heat lamps or things like that. Fortunately, the mother hen would act as the heat lamp for the baby chicks and keep them warm and safe. But sometimes if she decided she didn't want to care for them or maybe something happened to her, the farm wife would have to bring the chicks in the house. They would put them in a galvanized tub next to the wood stove or fireplace with an old wool blanket or sweater on top to keep the heat in. And then heat some water in a mason jar and put that in with the chicks to keep them warm as sort of the first homemade brooder for the baby chicks. 
Refrigeration had just been invented and probably wasn't in most rural homes. Eggs were not refrigerated, they could be left on the counter. Freshly laid eggs, as long as they're not washed, will last for several weeks. The natural bloom on the shell keeps air and bacteria out. In 1918, the first grocery store opened in Memphis, Tennessee. Most farm families still did not have access to a supermarket though, so they still were producing most of their own food. There were 250 egg hatcheries in the country. Nine years later, there were over 10,000, so chicken keeping was definitely on the rise. Tired of going out in awful weather to lock the coop or losing your favorite hen when you forget to lock up? Those days are over, thanks to the Polichet Automatic Chicken Door. With the Polichet, you can program a specific open and close time to make sure your chickens get out and in when they need to. You can also power it using solar energy or program a photo sensor mode to guarantee your chickens are all together and safe. Make life a little easier for yourself. Order your Pullet Shut today. Being outside with family can be some of the most memorable moments, but sometimes pests can get in the way. Want to protect your family and animals from insects without exposing them to harsh chemicals? Use First Saturday Lime around the house, in your chicken coop, or in animal stalls. First Saturday Lime is different than any other lime product. It's effective, but all natural and completely safe. Ditch the chemicals and try First Saturday Lime. Your girls deserve the best. When feeding your chickens Blue Seal Home Fresh poultry products, you will be giving them the balanced nutrition they need for their everyday health. You can be fully confident that Blue Seal products not only contribute to their nutrient-rich eggs, but also to the pretty sheen on their feathers. Visit their website, blueseal.com, or your local Blue Seal retailer to learn more. Tired of going out in awful weather to lock the coop or losing your favorite hen when you forget to lock up? Those days are over, thanks to the Polichet Automatic Chicken Door. With the Polichet, you can program a specific open and close time to make sure your chickens get out and in when they need to. You can also power it using solar energy or program a photo sensor mode to guarantee your chickens are all together and safe. Make life a little easier for yourself. Order your Polichet today. The 20s and 30s brought prohibition and the Great Depression to this country. Times were tough and jobs were scarce. Commercial chicken farming was on the rise. My grandparents got married and moved out to the country and started their own chicken farm. English was their second language and they didn't have higher education, but what they did know how to do was raise chickens. So they moved out to the country and they started a chicken farm. They raised chickens for meat and eggs and sold to local restaurants. My mom was born and her brother and sister and my grandparents continued the farm to support their ever-growing family. Several years later, they opened a diner and supplied the meat and eggs for the menu from their farm. Prior to the turn of the 20th century, about 80% of Americans were involved in farming activities. By the 1920s, that number was down to 32%. In the 1920s, the average chicken laid about 100 eggs a year, but due to some work and experimentation with breeding by the main experiment station and others, the current day chicken could lay over 300 eggs a year. Around the same time in the 1920s, commercial chicken feed companies started to hire poultry nutritionists and formulate commercial feeds that would also increase production and chicken health. Even the family farms now were starting to keep more chickens and found that they couldn't source or grow all their own grains for feed. That also led to the increase of commercial chicken feed companies. In 1922, something exciting happened. Vitamin D was discovered. This meant that chickens could be kept in confinement year round. Without exposure to sunlight and vitamin D, chickens did not do well production-wise, but this meant that commercial poultry farms could start to raise chickens year-round. I ask that the Congress declare that since 
the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. The 1940s brought war to the United States. Young men from around the country were being sent overseas from small towns and big cities. They were leaving their families to defend our country. My grandfather supported the war effort by supplying meat and eggs to the government. With three small children to support, the chickens, along with the vegetables from their victory garden, helped ease the pain of wartime rationing. Commercial chicken farming was booming, and then the 1940s arrived, and with it, World War II. The U.S. government encouraged everyone to raise chickens, and it's estimated by 1943 there were 18 million Victory Gardens in this country, and many of them included chickens as well. Victory Gardens were common during wartime. The government would encourage families to raise their own food to ease the burden on the commercial food supply. Since many women were home alone with their husbands overseas fighting, they tended to the garden and to a few chickens. Traditionally, chicken keeping has been the kind of the female responsibility. On farms, the men would be out, you know, with the horse team, uh, working the fields with the larger livestock, and chickens generally were kept closer to the house, so eggs could be collected easily, and plus they're smaller and more manageable for the women and children in the farm. Prior to the 1930s, most families were butchering their own chickens. But after that, supermarkets started to become more popular and dressed chickens could be bought at the store. In the spring of 1946, the war was over. The government had stopped encouraging planting gardens and as a result, many Americans didn't plant that year. They stopped raising chickens. Because cars and supermarkets were becoming more popular, it was easier just to go buy your eggs and meat. Also because of commercial egg farming, the price of eggs dropped and it was often cheaper just to buy them. Being outside with family can be some of the most memorable moments, but sometimes pests can get in the way. Want to protect your family and animals from insects without exposing them to harsh chemicals? Use First Saturday Lime around the house, in your chicken coop, or in animal stalls. First Saturday Lime is different than any other lime product. It's effective, but all natural and completely safe. Ditch the chemicals and try First Saturday Lime. At Blue Seal in Wyndham, we know that reputation matters. Always has, always will. That's why we provide our community with the best in feeds and supplies to help your animals stay happy and live healthy. For years, the people of Blue Seal have been dedicated to bringing you the best service and wholesome products all with an extensive knowledge of animals and a desire to help you with any situation. We believe every customer is part of our family, which is why your satisfaction matters. Visit Blue Seal and Wyndham today. Tired of going out in awful weather to lock the coop or losing your favorite hen when you forget to lock up? Those days are over, thanks to the Polichet Automatic Chicken Door. With a Polichet, you can program a specific open and close time to make sure your chickens get out and in when they need to. You can also power it using solar energy or program a photo sensor mode to guarantee your chickens are all together and safe. Make life a little easier for yourself. Order your Pullet Shut today. Being outside with family can be some of the most memorable moments, but sometimes pests can get in the way. Want to protect your family and animals from insects without exposing them to harsh chemicals? Use First Saturday Lime around the house, in your chicken coop, or in animal stalls. First Saturday Lime is different than any other lime product. It's effective, but all natural and completely safe. Ditch the chemicals and try First Saturday Lime. In the 1960s, women were entering the workforce in record numbers. Chickens were disappearing from the American backyard. 
My parents met, got married, and built a house across the street from my grandparents' chicken farm. Both my parents were teachers and had no intentions of raising chickens, but my grandparents, being who they were, built them a barn anyway. Chickens were a way of life in my family. I was born and my brother came along a couple years later and we always had a small flock of chickens in our backyard. The late 1950s signaled the beginning of the commercial poultry farms. Because egg prices had dropped so drastically, farmers were needing to keep more chickens and produce more eggs in order to earn a living. They started putting more chickens in smaller spaces and confining them into large, multi-level chicken barns. As more Americans moved into the suburbs, either out from the cities or in from the farms, they became more disconnected from where their food came from. The demise of the family farm and the uprising of the commercial poultry farms caused egg prices and chicken meat to drop so low that they lost their elite status and became more of an everyday staple for the average American family. Since women traditionally had the ones to take care of the chickens, once they started entering the workforce, chickens disappeared from American backyards. To make matters worse, in the 1960s, the government issued warnings about dietary cholesterol, suggesting limiting egg intake to no more than two a day. In the coming years, per capita egg consumption in the United States dropped to its lowest levels. Now, the average American family had refrigeration and cars, and there were super highways and grocery stores. So the need to raise and produce your own food had dropped dramatically. Due to the construction of interstate highways and the availability of refrigeration and freezers, chicken could be transported across the country. Starting in the 60s, Frank Perdue started running television commercials advertising his chicken, turning it into a brand name. Tyson Foods followed soon afterwards. The rise of fast food chains also serving inexpensive chicken made the need to raise your own obsolete. The advent of fast food chains also made it easy for the working woman to pick up chicken dinner on her way home from work. Backyard chicken keeping fell out of favor in the 70s and 80s. The yuppies were doing the two income family thing, everybody was caught up in the rat race, and backyard chickens basically disappeared from the backyard. Um, ironically, the same thing sort of happened in my family. My brother and I went away to college, my grandparents were older and no longer raised chickens, and that could have been the end of our family's chicken keeping dynasty. But long story short, I worked on Wall Street and got tired of the rat race met my husband, he was in the Navy, and once he retired, we bought a small farm in Virginia and started keeping chickens. Chicken keeping has changed a lot in the last 100 years. All our chickens have names, we only raise them for eggs, not meat, and they really have become backyard pets. But one thing has stayed the same, we're providing our family with food that we know where it comes from, we know that it's healthy, and it's better and more nutritious for our families. The next couple of decades were sort of blasé for the backyard chicken. Commercial chicken farms were using antibiotics and hormones to produce larger and more economical chicken products. New breeds were being developed purely for meat purposes and they were suffering heart attacks and other problems due to abnormally fast growth. Fast forward to the late 1990s, early 2000s. More and more Americans were thinking about the food they were eating. They were concerned about things that were being added to the food that they were buying commercially. The perception was that eggs from chickens raised in your own backyard, allowed to roam in the grass, eating bugs and weeds, would be healthier and more nutritious for your family. With backyard chicken keeping on the rise and chickens happily munching on bugs and grass in backyards, studies started being done about how much more nutritious those eggs were than commercial eggs. Eggs from chickens raised on pasture contain more omega-3s and vitamins than chickens fed a commercial feed. Mm -hmm. 
homesteading and learning skills that your grandparents might have had started to become popular again. People started canning, growing vegetables, and raising chickens. The hatcheries, which had been around since the turn of the century, started to see increased growth. More hatcheries opened up. Chicks were now being shipped on planes instead of trains, which made them able to get to their destination even faster. Companies started selling all kinds of chicken accessories, feeders and waterers, and there were more chicken feed companies, making it easier for the average person to raise backyard chickens. Backyard chicken keepers were starting to value their chickens, not only as egg layers, but also as helpers in the garden, tilling the soil, fertilizing and eating bugs, and also as family pets. The current day egg basket likely contains eggs from white to brown to blue to green to dark chocolate brown. This is because of the availability of rare breeds from various hatcheries and breeders around the country. Although there's no official record of how many backyard chickens exist in the United States, it's encouraging that the trend seems to be on the rise with no signs of slowing down. Over the last 10 years, backyard chicken keeping has just continued to rise in popularity. I'm proud to be carrying on my family's tradition with a flock of my own. I loved it so much, I told my friend. And he told his friends. And they told their friends. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to learn more about raising a backyard flock of your own, find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Fresh Eggs Daily or on FreshEggsDaily.com. My name is Jessica and this is Old Poland. In the background we have Lily. We have a small little backyard farm in Georgia and we have been chicken farming together for one year. Hi, my name is Christy. I'm from California and I've been raising chickens for six years. I'm Ellie and I'm from Texas and I raise chickens. Hi, I'm Megan from St. Albans, Vermont and this is my second summer with chickens. Hi, my name's Stephanie. I'm from Millis, Massachusetts, and I am a first-time chicken owner. I'm achieving a dream with my friends here. This is Ginger. And um, this is my first year. They're only six weeks old. Loving their coop, and I'm loving them. Hi, I'm Brenda from North Idaho, and I've been keeping chickens for one year. And this is Amelia, and I am a backyard enthusiast. Hi, I'm Angela. I live in Spangle, Washington. I've been raising chickens for over 30 years. Hi, my name is Easton. I live in Ohio and I've been raising chickens for a year. Hi, my name is Heather. I've been raising chickens since 1994. Hi, this is Holly. I live in Norway, Maine and we've been keeping eight chicks for four weeks now. This is Clarabelle and this is our coop and our run that we built with your uh, details and plans. So thank you, Lisa Steele, for inspiring us. Good morning, everyone. This is Gina. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Central Ohio, and I've had chickens now for 13 months. Hi, I'm Victoria, and I have been raising chickens since 2015 here in Georgetown, Texas.